Dub Nation, I feel like those dark days are behind us. Those moments that were dreary, that were depressing, where you were frustrated, you were pissed. There were bright days ahead of us. James Wiseman's making his debut. The Warriors are back in Denver with a reinvigorated squad that has momentum behind him now. Mark Haynes of Clutch Points is joining me, the Warriors beat reporter. Mark, are you ready to go, sir? It's great to see you, buddy. Yes, sir, man. It's always a pleasure to be on here with you, Cy. Let's do this. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. You can follow Mark Haynes on Twitter at Mark Haynes NBA. You can follow me on Twitter at Dog Surf Road Show and this program on Twitter at Locked On Dubs. Dieter Kurtenbach was going to join me originally today, but he's in Stockton, actually close to where you are, Mark. I mean, aren't you from San- from uh, Sacramento? Yes, sir. I'm in Sacramento, and uh, I'll be heading down to the game today as well. I I can't ever remember in the history of the NBA the city of Stockton uh, attracting this much attention. Yet the whole NBA world, at least here in Northern California, is there checking out that seven foot behemoth known as James Wiseman. Uh, first things first, man. Look, I I love your coverage of the Warriors. You're a fantastic reporter covering the team for Clutch Points. What are you expecting from this game tonight and and, and James Wiseman in general? You know that's a good question. I was actually. Uh talking about it on pod I did last night. Um, and my, my expectations for James is like this, the, I don't want to call it expectations. Like, I don't think he deserves, you know, that type of pressure, even though he's walking into another pressured situation where the Warriors really, really can use a seven foot giant like himself. But, I'm just I'm just hoping to see, you know, an active James Wiseman, somebody who looks like, you know, when when Clay came back, his first few games, the the best thing about it was seeing how he still moved the same. He still moved like Clay Thompson. He's still not quite there. He's not the same Clay that we're that we're used to. His shots not falling the same way, but he still looks the same. So yeah. I'm hoping that's what we see with James Wiseman. I hope we see uh, James Wise, actually, not, I, I I do hope he looks a little better because he he's bigger, he's bigger. So I want to see how he kind of used that size and um you know and that knowledge that he gained from from his rookie season. So that's kind of what I'm looking for when I'm when I'm when I'm checking him out. Yeah, and you know, like a lot of people have been critical. They're saying like you know like his rookie season wasn't that great, and so don't expect anything. I don't expect to see him in the playoffs. His rookie season was not that bad. The Warriors team as a whole was horrible. And, and the fact that they finished right. six games above 500 was just absurd. That was way beyond any form of expectations. But Wiseman, yeah. again, he was averaging 21 minutes a game. He was putting up 11 and a half points, I believe, nearly six rebounds. And there's a video clip. I put it on my Twitter account again, a dog surf road show. This uh, one of the Warriors fans named Dre. Who's, he's just one of these Twitter personalities, right? That just attracts a lot of Warriors fans. Um, and I don't know how old yeah. he is. He sounds like a little kid, but he he produces great content. Anyways, he he posted this video that I retweeted of Wiseman's last game, where he was really starting to figure it out. Man, he had touch on those floaters. Yeah. I mean, he was he made like a like a, a eighteen foot jump shot with a clean stroke. He was obviously hammering it down. The early reports uh, from Stockton during the practice session today was that he almost broke a rim. Um, you mentioned how much bigger he is. I just hope that extra weight doesn't hurt his legs. But like, what, like, like, right. how, like, in terms of expectations, and this is just an opinion question. Like, how many minutes do you see him playing for the Warriors? Like, where do you see him sliding in? Like, is he starting? You think? Is he playing maybe like 10, 15 in the second and third quarters? What do you expect? Just from your opinion on on that regard. Yeah, I'm. In my opinion, I'm thinking like that 10, 15 range. Um, if he's obviously if he's playing really well. You know they're gonna bump the minutes up because you you could use them, but I feel like ten or fifteen minutes is a good like kind of like that, you know the 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 Javale McGee type you know role where you don't necessarily he's not he may not even play every single game, you know, uh, but he just kind of gives you good solid minutes. And the Warriors yep. a lot of times, like you say in the in the third quarter, which the, in the beginning of the season they were a great third quarter team, You're right? And now the second half. They're, you know, they have issues. And a lot of times 
size starts to weigh on him. You know, the the team start getting a whole bunch of offensive rebounds. And if he could come in and give you a good four to five minutes, you know, in those stretches, I think that'll be really, really beneficial for the Warriors. And I, I kind of think that's how they're gonna gonna kind of use them. Cause Steve Kerr said, you know, he 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 wasn't gonna try to put too much pressure on them, but they, you know, want to just put them in, in in certain situations. And I think mm-hmm. that 10, 15 minute range, I think that's gonna be perfect for James Wiseman, especially this late in the season. I couldn't agree with you more. And, and I really do think if he shines that you will see him in the postseason. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really do. I don't see why not. I mean, he's a big body. I, he's not a dumb individual. He is actually a smart basketball player. Uh, and again, when it, when you when you look at those clips of him playing last year, there is so much potential. Um, that, right. I, that hasn't gone away, you know? Like, the talent hasn't gone away. He's rusty. Uh, but, yeah. Right. And, and, and going back to Clay real quick, you know, you talked about his comeback. It hasn't so far, like – been exciting dub nation necessarily like originally we were stoked we saw him out there after two and a half years yeah. but he hasn't really been lighting up the scoreboard but it's not he's not putting up shabby numbers either uh and, and he had right. that illness like some people have been critical lately like you know why is he not you know accelerating his progress like well dude, he had a really gnarly illness that knocked him out for two games in the middle of a recovery right. process where he was nowhere near his prime yet uh and his peak yet um so i you know i i guess the question is for clay like like what are you seeing from him so far and what are your expectations for him as we get closer to the postseason? Well, I actually expect Clay to have a, a a really good postseason, and it's not necessarily because of him by himself, but because they're getting Draymond Green back. And oh. something I looked up, you know, coming into the season was it was a funny stat. You know, Steph Curry, and you talk about that duel of Steph Curry and Dre, but Draymond actually passes the ball more. And gets mm-hmm. more assists to Clay Thompson. And we all know how when Draymond's on the court, he figures out a way to get those guys better looks. And it's looks that they're not getting right now. And I mm-hmm. think Clay Thompson is going to really benefit heavily from having Draymond Green back and oh, them being at yeah. full strength. And yeah, I think I think that's when the shots are going to fall. Because right now, this Clay Thompson, he's doing a little, he's doing some things that he normally, you know, typically doesn't do. You know, he's dribbling the ball a lot more. You know, we've had games like the, you know, games in the past where he had dribbled 11 times and yep. he barely put the ball <laughs> on the floor. But now he's a, he's a dribbling machine right now. So I've I noticed think that, Draymond yeah. Kind of helped. Yeah, like it's it's like ISO. And I'm like, man, this this is not Clay. You know, he, he can do it a little, but Clay is, is, a, is a daily catch and shoot guy. And I think when you get Draymond back on the floor with him, I think that's going to open up his game a lot more, and we're going to see more of the old Clay Thompson. Oh, and I can't, and you, that's a great call, man. Like, he has been handling the ball a lot. I didn't realize this about Clay, by the way. He was a point guard in high school. I really, I did not right. know that. So, so he, he can handle the rock. I'm not super concerned about that, but I'm with you. I don't like him, like, actually penetrating, trying to make plays. He brings mm-hmm. the ball up the court, which I don't remember ever seeing that before, or yeah. at least re- really rarely. <laughs> um, so, no, I'm, I'm with you, man. It, it, Draymond is the medicine for this team. And and I just love that they played the way they did against the Clippers, just to remind people we can still play without them, but to be a championship right. team, we need Dre. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about Tyreek Evans and the possibility of him joining the team because you cover, I, I, you're a Sacramento native. I'm sure you watched him in SAC when he played for that team. I believe he won Rookie of the Year for the Kings, didn't yep. he? Um, so we're going to talk yep. about that and so much more. Uh, but first, I want to talk about one of our new sponsors for Locked On Locked On Warriors, and that is Athletic Greens, and more specifically, the AG1. So one thing Athletic Greens did that I'm really stoked on is they actually sent me a package of their products so I can try it for myself and talk about it myself and j- instead of just reading an ad copy. And here's the bottom line. My mom is, I trust her over anyone when it comes to health. My sister is a nutrition nut as well. They both looked at the ingredients of this product. They looked at like like the, the the specific vitamins that are in there and the minerals, and they don't just consume anything. They, they they're firm believers of of you are what you eat and you are what you put in your body. And this stuff is nutritious. It's good for you. All you do is you just make a drink. You just pour either a scoop or a drop into a cup of water in the morning, stir it up, drink it on an empty stomach, 
and you are revitalized. This is good for your digestive system. This is good for your immune for your immune system. It gives you energy. It's also good for your brain. So you're thinking more clearly, articulating more clearly. This is some good stuff right here. And all you have to do is just go to their website to pick it up. That's athleticgreens.com. And to make things easy for you, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five tree five free travel packs with your first purchase. My mom and sister kept the travel packs. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NBA network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NBA network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And today's episode is also brought to you by a longtime sponsor, Bet Online. It's that time of year again. College basketball's March Madness tournament is finally upon us from all the latest odds, contests, and player props. BetOnline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and information. I just went there a moment ago and was a little surprised, Mark, to see that the Warriors are favored in tonight's game by two in Denver. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that, man? Like I, that surprised me. They're the favorites. I, I, I what, what do you think about that? Yeah, that's uh yeah, that's surprising to me too. Uh, but I guess, you know, if, if we were talking about a month ago when, when the Warriors had it rolling, <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be so much a surprise, but I, I guess, I guess they're very impressed with that, that Clippers victory, which it was, it was an impressive victory. I think it was a good what? win. Uh, but you know, Denver is tough, man. And the fact that they just, you know, they just were in Denver, fly home, play, what, what was that, Monday or whatever, play, or yep. yeah, fly home Tuesday and play. And then they're right back in Denver. And people, if you like, if you haven't traveled to Denver, that's kind of a, you know, a tough place to be going back and forth to. So I, I, I would, I would bet the other way for this game. But, you know, when you got Steph and Clay, you know, anything's possible. You're right. And, and and most of the team is traveling. We'll review the injury report in just a second. And uh, but one crazy thing is, is uh, the Warriors might get swept. Um, I did not realize that the, the, the Nuggets are aiming for a full uh, season sweep of the Warriors. And we'll talk about it in just a moment. But again, you can get all that betting information by going to betonline.net. The over under is 229. And it's not just basketball. Bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast, nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. And speaking of an expert, my guest Mark Haynes is just that. He covers the reporters for Clutch Points. You can follow him on Twitter at Mark Haynes NBA. Yeah, the Nuggets are going for a sweep of the Warriors tonight. I don't think the Warriors want that. Maybe that's why the line is, is set the way it is. Uh, do you have all the information regarding who's playing tonight, uh, the injury report, and all that great stuff that Warriors fans need? Oh, Mark just wrote to me that it froze. Okay, so so he I lost him for a moment. Mark, just close the app and come back in a second. Uh, and while you do that, I'm quickly going to report what I am aware of. We don't know yet if Otto Porter Jr. Um, is going to play. He's reportedly battling an illness. Uh, and and uh, i got to actually type... Uh, restart to Mark Haynes so that hopefully uh, we'll even join us back in just a second. Um, yeah, so Otto Porter Jr. has been battling batting, battling an illness. And we've covered this a lot uh, on the show as well. Um, sorry, I'm like messaging with... Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so Mark Haynes will hopefully join me back in a second here. Uh, about Otto Porter Jr. basically not really being himself since the injury that knocked him out for a little bit. I, believe it was, I don't know if it was like a serious injury but his career completely got rocked uh, some years back from very serious leg injuries. And he's on minutes restrictions. I don't know if those will keep up once the postseason starts. Um, now he's battling an illness that that the the guess is that it's the same illness that Clay Thompson was battling. It's going around. Mark, do we have you now? Can you hear me? 
Yeah, I'm back. Sorry about that. Love it. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. The technology, man. What are you going to do? Um, so can you tell Dub Nation what's the what's the expectation for uh, the Nuggets game tonight in terms of injuries, who's playing and who isn't? You know, I actually I'm actually behind on that. I haven't looked at the uh, the injury report, but I believe last I seen was Gary Payton is out again. Uh, yeah. Um, no Iguodala. Junior. No Auto Porter. Right. So that is what's it the same. With- did, did, yeah, no, I was going to ask, like, what, what do you think is going on with Otto Porter Jr., man? I was talking about that for a moment while while uh, we lost you there. Like, he had that, he had that. I don't know if you call it a leg injury. He had some leg issue back in, I think, February. And since he came back, he was on a minutes restriction and has not been the same. I, I think that's fairly obvious. Um, and, and now he's got the, uh, he's diagnosed with illness, which I think is the same one that Clay Thompson had. I love how they're never specific with that. Um yeah, what do you think about him, man? Are you worried? Like, is that something? Because he was—he's an important part of this, a part of piece of this Warriors team. Right. No, I'm not. You know, I—I I don't think they're too worried about Otto. Being that, you know, the things he do, he's such a, he's such a, he—he's a little more than than just a shooter. You know, he—he yeah. he can get in there and scrap. He can bang with the big guys. You know, he—he's definitely he definitely was a steal this season. And, you know, I think the Warriors are just being special with all the, you know, they got guys that's dealt dealt with a lot of injuries. They have older guys, you know, like Andre Iguodala, who's still been out. I think they're just being real cautious with these dudes and want to make sure that they're healthy going into the postseason. And end of the day, that's the most important part. And his shot, his shot isn't going anywhere. He's going to always be able to shoot the ball. He's going to all, the way he plays, the game he's he's going to be able to do that as long as he's you know healthy and able to run and, and, and keep his conditioning up and things like that i think auto porter be just fine and yeah i i hope you're correct my man and what about gary payne the second he's a player i consider to be vitally important like i like i it disappoints me that the warriors haven't offered an extension to him yet i hope he comes back for for next season and beyond but his defense is stalwart um, you don't count on him for offense, but he makes those clutch buckets, and especially inside, he's a huge player. Is this leg injury? It feels like it's something that's been lingering. He he had like an issue with I think like his uh not his hip, but like his flexors or some sort of abdominal thing uh, at the beginning of the season. Now he's got the leg injury. Is that something to worry about? Yeah. Like I mean, you you're 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 an insider of this team, man. What what are you seeing yourself? <laughs> you know, and it's funny. I I actually seen. I started noticing a few weeks ago before he actually started missing games. I started noticing a few weeks ago. He was kind of he kept kind of touching his knee and you know tending mm. to that to that same knee. And you know I'm, I'm I didn't I didn't think to ask. I don't know why at the time I should have I should have asked. But I kind of noticed it. And uh, when it happened, I was like, damn, I was right. I should have should have said something. But um, <laughs> I think <laughs> I think he's go. I think. It's definitely a concern, you know, anytime you're dealing with knees and, and, and things like that, because they, you know, even if it's not a serious injury, it could last a while. You know, Andre Iguodala, he's he's much older, but a knee injury, he's been, it's, it's nothing serious, they say, but he's been out for, you know, over 30 games or whatever. So it's, it's something to, to pay attention to, but the way, the, the way GP2 is built, you know, I, I, I think he'll, he'll be out there soon, even if it's at a time where, you know, he's playing through an injury. Because, like I said, I think I think he was hurt a long time ago. And he just kind of, you know, he was playing so good. The team was rolling. And he's one of those guys that, like you said, like he he's just dependable. You could depend on him for, you know, you could depend on him to knock, knock down open shots now, which is yep. a huge plus. That nobody expected. You know, he's, he's the smallest center in the league because he's like a center <laughs> on, on offense yeah. you're right <laughs> you know he's, right, the, he's the lob threat like he's he's a all he's a swiss army knife he's all purpose and uh if the if the warriors are going to make a run that that's that's the bad thing about this roster i like it a lot but they need to be fully healthy to Correct. get all the way to the champion oh i could not if they're agree not fully healthy it's, it's going to be tough you're so right with that, man. Do you think there's a correlation? Remember, like a, a few weeks back, uh, Gary Payne the second had that weird spill where he crashed into the to the to the uh, courtside seats, and he like he smacked. I think he smacked his shin. Um, is that the same thing, yeah. or are those like two separate injuries? You know, you know, I, I actually, if I remember correctly, 
it might have happened the same game. I'm I'm at, I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna look into that because I feel like it might have been the same game. Cause I think he took another fall or bump knees or something in that same game. But I do yep. remember that fall too, where it's like the shin. And I was like, man, GP two is getting beat up, and he is having a good game. It's all over the place. <laughs> yeah. So that that's something that's something to look into right there. <laughs> I'm totally with you. And by the way, I don't know, I don't know I, from hearing your cough. I don't know if you have the same smokers cough I do. I don't mean cigarettes. Uh, we need to hang out someday, my boy. Uh, look, when we uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about Tyreek and so much more. First, the, uh, let's talk about a, a great sponsor of Locked On Warriors, and that is Rock Auto. Look, if you want to save money, especially in these days when oil companies are just ripping every human being on the planet off with those insane gas prices, you got to save money, and Rock Auto is there to do that. With the incre ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain, chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning like, is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? <clears throat> and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? An example being the Honda Odyssey fuel pump, $353 from a chain store, just $216 from Rock Auto. It's a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years with reliably low prices for every customer. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. rockauto.com <laughs> On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. Follow Mark Haynes on Twitter at Mark Haynes NBA, a fantastic Warriors reporter providing the information you need. Oh, we lost him again. He'll join us back in just a second. I'm going to start this conversation about Tyreek Evans. He's done two workouts for the Golden State Warriors. He was a former client of Bob Myers. Easy to forget that Bob Myers, the, the president and GM of the Golden State Warriors, was a former player's agent. Uh, everyone talks about Rob Palinka being, being someone who, uh, as a prime example of someone who's transitioned from the uh, uh, player agent role to a personnel role for an NBA team. Well, Bob Myers was also a GM, and I hope we got Mark Haynes back again. I'm glad you figured out that every time something goes wrong, just close it and come back. Uh and so, and I'm talking about Bob Myers, you know, Tyreek Evans was his client. So there was a relationship there. They've worked out a couple of times. Tyreek, you tweeted, was in attendance uh, for that last Warriors game against the Clippers. Um, anything you've heard about Tyreek? Do you think he's coming to the Warriors? And if he does, who do you think he replaces on the roster? So that's a good question. Um, so I've, I've heard that they worked him out and, and, and he's impressed them. Like they they really like Tyreek Evans. Um, he's a guy, you know, when he when he before he got banned from playing, um uh, he, he he could play. You know, like yeah. he's a former rookie of the year. He's a he's a big body and he could play the point he could play anywhere from now now the game has changed some, so he could basically play play from one to four now. <laughs> and uh, and play some some little five if needed, because positionless basketball, but He's definitely a guy that, if if healthy, uh, which he look he looks in, he looks in really good shape. He he took care of his body uh, during the time time off. Um, I think it's a real possibility, um, but who who that I think that's probably the biggest question of if they're going to do this is like who do we take away because the Warriors, you know, outside of this this horrible last what 12, 12 games or so or whatever outside of that. The Warriors have been really, really good. So it's do you True. really change everything up for for what's happening now, or or do you rely on what's what's been going on for most of the season? They've been, you know, most of the year they were top top two teams in the not just in the West but in the league, you know. So I, I think that's kind of what they're looking at and they're taking a closer look. And yeah, I got a chance to see them um, 
as he was leaving the game, and uh, he he looks good. And I I I, I have to admit, I I think it would be a good move to add, you know, another playmaker, you know, to this roster. I, I'm totally with you. And the Warriors right now, despite everything that has gone on, they still have the third best record in the NBA. Just a half game. Yeah. Here's my here's my take on Tyreek, because I've been watching this kid from the moment he came in the league. Shouldn't be calling him a kid anymore. He's in his early 30s now. Um, <clears throat> like you said, he's a physical specimen. He actually came in as a point guard, like you said, as well. 6'6", what, 220 is what he weighs. He's lived 32 years now, but he also hasn't played in three years. So the wear and tear that comes with that. Can't, doesn't really apply, right? So you're saving some mileage on on the the overall car there. In, in the last, I believe his last full season or his second to last full season, he averaged nearly 20 points a game for the Grizzlies. Dude can score. Dude can handle the rock. Like you said, and this is what I really wanted to touch on. Despite the fact that he came into this game as a point guard, he can easily play power forward for the Warriors. I mean, he, he's he's yeah. almost the exact same physical build as Iguodala. I kind of wonder if like they're looking at him as like Iguodala's kind of replacement because he he handles the ball like mm-hmm. Iggy. He can defend. I I, I don't want to. I can't speak as an expert on that regard. I haven't studied his game enough, but right. I do remember. And again, this goes with coaching, right? You can coach team defense, and he's got the physicality right. to do so. I love it. Um, uh, on yesterday's show, Dieter thinks that uh, Damian Lee is the odd man out based on the fact he didn't play the last game. I think I, I don't, I'm not quite as sold on that only because Bielitsa was inactive a couple games before for no good reason right. as well. And Bielitsa, if there's anyone right. that's disappointed, it, it's got, in my opinion, it's got to be him. And I don't think you're losing much swapping Bielitsa for Tyreek. Whereas with Damian Lee, you're still losing a three point shooter. But that's me. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, we're on the same page. We both think if Tyree comes, that's a good move for this team, right? Yeah, yeah. No, and like you said about Belly, uh, he, he started off the season really good. He looked like a, a good fit. He was knocking down open shots, and he's still getting those same open looks now. He's getting them, and it's just not going in for him. And, um, you know, I, 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 yeah, I have to just say I agree with you on that. <laughs> no, we're, we're on the same page. I, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, let's talk about your podcast, dude. Besides, besides the main one, I'm, I'm happy, happily coming on that anytime you want me. I believe you. Uh, that's with Clutch Boom. Points, it's the Multiverse app, yeah. right? I believe that's what it's called. Um, yeah. But then you also have the second uh, podcast slash YouTube show, which I love the the format and the premise of it, which is you're interviewing NBA basketball players on their origins, right? Like on their first years. Can you talk about that for people who aren't familiar with it? Correct. Yeah, it's called Year One, and. Um... Yeah, I'm interviewing guys. I'm looking forward to to putting together a really good lineup uh, this season or this summer, excuse me, this summer. And, um, yeah, we basically talk about all the little, you know, it's a real lighthearted show. We talk about their experiences, you know, during their rookie year where it comes from different uh, situations where they're being hazed by teammates or they, they, every time I say hazed, they always be like, Oh, nobody hazed me or whatever. But you know, <laughs> they got rookie, du- they call it rookie duties now. So they tell me about <laughs> rookie duties or, you know, what superstars bullied them on the court, their best and worst game, the game they remember, the plays they remember, things like that. It's, it's a real fun, quick interview and, and you know I, I love doing it <laughs> oh dude i love that it's so funny how like just they just changed the nomenclature like we call it i forgot what you said but it's hazy it's hazing who cares i know the frat scene totally ruined yeah. that word but um but yeah man right. it's just putting rookies through some torture <laughs> i feel like dream on green would be a great subject for your for your show just because i'm sure he has his own stories but i'm, I'm also positive he's dishing it out for all the new rookies yeah I mean, yeah he, I'm guessing he's the captain of, of whatever whatever it is you're dishing to them. Yeah, that's another thing. I'm gonna have to start asking them what they what do they do to their rookies when they coming in. So that's that's a really good question. I, I appreciate that, Sai. Oh man, it's all good. <laughs> Definitely I just love go that use format. that. I love that format, man. Yeah. And Mark, it's always a pleasure having you on, dude. And again, the Warriors are playing the Nuggets tonight to try and prevent a sweep. Uh, and and continue to see they're only half game behind the Grizzlies. As crazy as, as it sounds, that two seed is still there. Let me let's finish up the show. With this this is a, a, a interesting question in my opinion, and I hope you agree. But and if not, at least answer it. Um, until very recently, I was of the thinking that the Warriors should be fighting for that two seed just because you're getting 
the the winner of that first playing game right between seven and eight like that's who the two seed is going to play and i actually like this idea i don't know if it was zach low or somebody threw it out there that the one seed should get to pick who they play between the, the play mm-hmm. all the playing winners i i think that, i actually like that idea that it, just because it is weird that the they play the play in the second playing winner that could be like the lakers that could be the clippers it's, it's insane but anyways uh right. it, but now my thinking's changed a little bit like i actually wouldn't mind the mavericks as opposed to maybe playing the lakers in the first round who what do you think the Warriors should do with this last month and change as they as they start this playoff push? Like, do you would you prefer them being the two seed and fighting for that, or are you okay with them falling to three or maybe even four? To me personally, I'm I'm okay with, with three or four simply because they play so bad the the last few weeks. I think for them, like more importantly, is just get back to playing go to state warriors basketball. If they can do that then I, I kind of like their odds, you know, again, the odds against anybody, but they're just so, they're so, they've been playing. So they've been, they're the only team that's, I, I was looking at this yesterday. They're the only team in the, in the Western conference that's locked into the playoffs that has a losing record in the last 10 games. Everybody else have winning records. They're the only team. They're three and seven in their last 10. And the next team that has a losing record, is like I think it's Houston or something like that, all the way at the bottom. So yeah, they've been or the Lakers, excuse me, Houston and Lakers. So it's Warriors, Lakers, Houston, and then so I just no. want to see some good basketball going in. If that means you're the, the third or fourth seed, sure. Like right now, I don't think the Warriors have the luxury of deciding where they want to be. Yeah, I hear you on that. And, and again, like I, I really don't think the Mavericks. I think the Mavericks would be the ideal opposition. I was saying Minnesota for a while, but I actually think because I mean they they, they lost them yeah. twice, but these were really close games when the Warriors were going through the darkest point of their entire season. So when they're doing great, I don't I don't think Luca and company stand a chance. But that's just me. Uh, I, I want to ask one more question actually because you brought up the Rockets and Lakers. These two teams played each other yesterday. This was not one of LeBron and the Lakers shining moments. What are your thoughts on the Lakers and LeBron? I I I I know you follow them somewhat and you and you cover the NBA as a whole. Like like what's the future and the present hold for that team and that player? Yeah, you know, I, I just actually got got through. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a LeBron fan, I will admit. And uh so my Most friends, are, even though I cover Most the Warriors, and I don't even like I don't follow the Lakers like that anymore, and I don't follow, you know, LeBron as a fan like that anymore, but Every time, you know, LeBron messes up or something, my friends, I get a big group text of messages just, yeah, LeBron is LeBron that. And I'm like, I don't even care. I'm, focused, I'm I'm worried about James Wiseman right now. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but man, that, they, they look horrible over there. It's no, you know, it's no way to sugarcoat it. Um, it's, it's a shame and, and, a, and a, a disappointment of the things that's going on over there with Russell Westbrook. Um, you know, he has to take a, a little ownership of as far as like his play on the court. But once it start going, you know, to your, your family and, and, and talking about his name and stuff like that, I'm not one of those guys that give people nicknames and, you know, um, talk because some people name is, is important to him. And, and yeah. now he's expressed. I've never seen Russell like this. I've never seen him open and showing. The fans have have bo- are, are bothering him, and then when you, when you look at LeBron, man, it, he's he's out there, man. It, it, a lot of times, it looks like he's by himself, and like I had to like in, in this group text, I was like, man, this dude. We're talking about a thirty seven year old player who's you know still playing at a, at an elite level. Yes, but we, you know, it's kind of hard for me to place blame on a thirty seven year old professional athlete about anything because this he should be cruising right now he should have he should be riding on on ad and, and russell westbrook's back they should need him when when they need him which should have been in the playoffs if they make it there but he's the guy he's still the lead horse he's still carrying the team and at 37 years old yep. I, I i don't think i don't think you're getting much more out of lebron he's averaging 29 like it's insane. Like to so in order to win, like to beat the Warriors, let's think about that. To beat the Warriors, the uh, was it a week ago? Uh-huh. He had to score fifty. He had 56. to score fifty. 50. 
56 to barely yeah. beat him. Barely. So we no, you're right, man. <laughs> it wasn't a blowout. It, it wasn't that. No. He had to score all 56 points to get that victory. So the fact that that's how they have to win, they're not going to be that good. That is, it's just plain and simple. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this, man. Here, here's where I think LeBron deserves blame, and that is he is so influential in terms of roster construction. So I do wish he took some right. responsibility and accountability for that. The Westbrook thing, I'm never going to forget the, the, the 2016 when he laughed and chortled uh, during a press conference when someone asked, you know, like, like talk, asked about Stephen Curry's defense. He laughed at that. Um, that is utter disrespect. Mm -hmm. yet, yet Stephen Curry right now is defending him publicly. And then the Westbrook, the Westbrook yeah. name, if it was a personal connotation there i could understand the sensitivity but it's just it's strictly related to his basketball play nothing more um it's, it's a little it's a little and, oversensitive in my opinion but and, and fan, fans i feel like i feel like fans they like when when fans are saying westbrook or whatever like sure like whatever fans gonna say a lot of things they're gonna say you're SDR. trash you you can't you know all that stuff i i get it get it there i just i feel like a little bit when, when it comes to like, you know, professionals or whatever, when they get to call them West Brick or whatever, because it's like, you know, we have we have so much influence, you know, even if we have a, you know, a small following and some of us have huge followings, you know, uh -huh. to influence, you know, more slander. And now I feel like that's it, it grew from calling him West Brick. To, to get into his wife because his wife is actively, you know, speaking on his behalf. And, you know, it's, it's just unfortunate. But, I mean, end of the day, if Russell Westbrook was playing like the old Russell Westbrook, the Russell Westbrook that was knocked down from mid-range and could shoot 85% from the free throw line, the name wouldn't be – it wouldn't be here. So, yep. I mean, if you you want all the noise to quiet, quiet down and get calm, all you got to do is start playing good. That's and true. I'm a huge, I'm I'm a huge Westbrook fan. Winning cures everything. I, I and there's just he's done so many of those crazy shots this year where like it hits the top of the backboard. There's just been so many examples of that. And, and you're right, his shooting percentages have dipped across the board. Um, and and then the only thing I want to I want to mention too is his former teammate Kevin Durant. When Durant left and everyone started co co calling him a cupcake, when that's a little more personal, <laughs> right? I didn't hear Westbrook exactly say right. anything. So it, you know, I I don't know, man. I I guess. Everyone has their opinion on this. If it was a name that again that that attacked him personally, I could see the issue being there. But it's just strictly related to his shooting for his shot, and you got to deal with that, dude. Right. You're, you're a professional athlete, and I'm guessing you're referring to Skip Bayless, who just loves criticizing a lot of people. <laughs> really, I mean, he cuts, <laughs> man. He, yeah, that's his that's his brilliance. Dude. He cuts. He cuts. Here's what I'll here's what I'll leave with, and I don't know if you agree with me or, with this or not. Despite all the struggles the Lakers are dealing with, if AD comes back and he's even 80% of what he was, I don't want to face them in the playoffs. No, thank you. Like, I, I nobody, mean, any it could anything could happen. You're still dealing with one of the all time greats in LeBron, a player who, and if he's healthy, could be top five or top 10. I don't want to face that. <laughs> like, no, thank you. So, yeah, I, you know, like, that's, yeah, that's, not there. These are these are professional athletes. Like, Russell Westbrook didn't get to the NBA you know, by luck. Like he was, he's Heck. one of the, he made the top 75. Yep. All it takes, if, if if you play sports, like you go through droughts. I'm, I don't know if this is like, you know, it's been some years for, for, for Russ, but all he needs is a good three week stretch. He had a great game last night. They lost, but he had a great game last night. Shot the ball. Right. Well, uh, uh, distributed. Did he, he was, a he was solid. If he can do that, from the rest of the season into the playoffs, LeBron's playing at a at a he's playing at a crazy level, averaging twenty nine, shooting fifty one percent. And like you said, if you could get AD, AD is the key. He's the he's yep. the biggest question mark. Like Russell Westbrook, he hasn't he's having his struggles and and all of that. But when everything it starts at the top, when everything from the top is working right and is going, everything falls into place. And Russell Westbrook would be in that category of things falling into place. And if if AD, yeah, if AD comes back at eighty percent, no, this this could be a dangerous team, man. Uh, like they they have a lot of guys, they have a lot of experience and wisdom yep. over there. <laughs> so you know, I, I don't think anybody would want to see them, especially early on in the playoffs. 
And that could be the first round match for Phoenix, which is insane. But uh, it's absolutely insane. You dominate the NBA, have the best record, and you're, you're rewarded for that with LeBron James and Anthony Davis in the first round. What? Oh, man, Mark, it is such a pleasure having you on, dude. And and for everyone else listening, if you don't follow him yet on Twitter, please do. It's at Mark Haynes NBA. He's the official Warriors beat reporter for Clutch Points, giving you all the insights that you want and need as a fan of the Warriors. And tomorrow we're going to be recapping Wiseman's uh, first game back in 11 months to the day since his knee injury, uh, playing for the Santa Cruz Warriors in Stockton. Thank you for making Locked on Warriors your first listen every day. And we're also going to recap, of course, the Nuggets game. And let's hope that the Warriors don't get their season series swept in the process. Now make your second listen Locked on NBA. Locked on experts covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Mark, such a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. I hope we hang out at some point soon. And I'll see you at Chase Center. I'm going to be back there at some point, uh, especially the playoffs. I'm going to start being there pretty regularly. I'm going to try to, but... uh. Yeah, I'll see you soon, man. Thanks so much again, dude. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks, Si. Take care.